In this video, we're going to go over how to identify the inheritance pattern of a sample pedigree. So here we have a pedigree and we can see who is showing the trait and who isn't, and we need to identify the inheritance pattern. So for these questions, there are four different inheritance patterns we can choose from, autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, and X-linked recessive. So let's first start with looking if this could be autosomal recessive. So you step, step one is to label the genotype. So if this was autosomal recessive, everyone who shows the trait should have small a, small a. And then the next step would be to label the genotypes of the parents. And so all of these people shown here would be carriers. Now, I said at the start of these lessons is that for these samples for problem solving, assume that anyone marrying into the family doesn't bring in the allele. Now, yes, there could be high background allele frequency. We'll talk about that in another context. But for these problems, assume someone marrying into the family isn't bringing in the allele. But you see here with these folks that are circled in blue, these are two people that are marrying into the family and they would have to bring that little a, that recessive allele with them. So we know that this isn't possible under these circumstances, so this isn't autosomal recessive. So what about X-linked recessive? Could it be that? So let's label the genotypes here. Now remember with X-linked recessive, males are hemizygous, so they need one mutated X. Females are not hemizygous, they have two copies of the X chromosomes, they would need two versions of that allele. And so then let's label the other parents to lead to those generations. And right away, we see here that these two people would have to marry into the family and bring the allele. But then also I want you to look at the connection between these two individuals here because for that girl here to be affected, she'd need two X's with the allele in question. And that means she'd have to have gotten one from her dad, but her dad is not affected. So this cannot be X-linked recessive. So we can draw a line through that. So now let's look to see if this could be X-linked dominant. Let's label all our genotypes. So if this is X-linked dominant, Remember, males have one X, so that would have the allele. And females, if it's X-linked dominant, they could have two copies or one copy of the allele. For dominant traits, usually we see just one copy. And up here, we would see that there's no case where both parents have the trait. So we know that these daughters must only have one copy of the X. What I want you to do here is follow that X down from generation one to generation two. So this daughter received that mutated X from her dad. But over here, this son cannot have received that mutated X from dad because dad passes on a Y, not an X. And so this is the, the concerning transmission here that's not possible for this to be X-linked dominant. So we know this answer is no, so we can cross a line through that. So we're pretty sure this is autosomal dominant by way of elimination, but let's go through and let's just check that it all makes sense. So all of these individuals would be big A, little a, and we can follow the transmission of the big A through the pedigree. And so yes, this makes sense. The answer to this pedigree is the inheritance pattern is autosomal dominant. 